Today, we will once again take a look at interesting footage that captures a moment. How munitions RPG on Ukrainian FPV drones take out Russian soldier on arrival in Tonik. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has often forced it to get innovative in its defense. Western countries have sent billions in military aid to Ukraine, including lethal aid, to support its war effort. But Ukrainian forces are also relying on their own handiness and creativity on the battlefield, jury rigging improvised solutions to get the upper hand against the Russian army. From FPV drones armed with explosives to civilian pickup trucks with rocket launchers set up in the back, but that Ukrainian soldiers are making the most of what they've got to batter Russian forces. Ukrainian forces have often resorted to scrappy methods to take out Russia's troops, vehicles, aircraft, and warships. Methods include somewhat unusual approaches like mixing Western-made arms with Soviet-era weapons already in their arsenal, among others. Ukrainian forces have also employed makeshift exploding one-way attack drones made using inexpensive hobby FPV drones capable of carrying explosives attached with zip ties and tape. Ukraine's relatively cheap drones don't necessarily compare to higher-end loitering munitions, but the unassuming aircraft can still pack a punch using RPG warheads and plastic explosives. These assets, which the Russians also use, offer asymmetric advantages, as a drone worth a few hundred bucks can take out a tank worth millions, and they can reach areas that other weapons can't with precision. Any equipment can be hit in a place where the enemy thinks he is a million percent safe, Major Kirill Veers, a Ukrainian brigade commander, told the New York Times, explaining that he sees huge potential in the drones. The success of drones, both in the air and sea, led to a boom in Ukraine's drone industry. Around 200 companies in Ukraine turned their attention to manufacturing drones, putting out 50 times more deliveries this past December compared to the previous year, said Mikhailo Fedorov, the Minister of Digital Transformation. Ukrainian forces, like the Russians, have also built makeshift tank cope cages in a last-ditch effort to defend the armored vehicles from drone strikes, though the flimsy improvised armor regularly isn't enough for either side. The FPV drones that have been terrors on the battlefield have been seen in videos slipping past these defenses. A weapons tracking researcher told Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty that the cages are mainly intended to disrupt Russian Lancet munitions, a kind of loitering munition. Retired Lieutenant General Ben Hodges, a senior advisor at Human Rights First and former top U.S. Army commander, previously noted that the craftiness of Ukrainian soldiers is why people often use the MacGyver metaphor, referencing the original 1980s TV show in which the titular character found game-changing solutions with the simplest of materials. One such MacGyvered weapon is an improvised multiple rocket launcher system that Ukrainian forces have put on the back of civilian pickup trucks. With its efficient mobility and the lethal power of rocket-propelled explosive projectiles, the vehicle is fittingly dubbed the Nightmare Mobile by Ukrainian forces. Ukrainian soldiers have tossed other weapons on trucks as well. One military unit in Kapiansk, Ukraine, mounted old Soviet-era Kansas-19 anti-aircraft guns onto civilian trucks to drive the deadly war machine in and out of combat. First came the old guns, which are not maneuverable and which no one wants to work with much, Ukrainian SGT Evgeny Ayatvin explained to media. While Ukrainian sergeant already fought on the front line, he already had the guns, and he already understood their effectiveness, their safety, and that everything can be better and more convenient. I came up with the idea that I should put the gun on the truck, we brought, renovated and installed it, he added. In April 2022, Ukraine demonstrated the power of its Neptune missiles by sinking the lead ship of Russia's Black Sea Fleet, a guided missile cruiser called the Moskva.
With the Moskva, they MacGyvered a very effective anti-ship system that they put on the back of a truck to make it mobile and move it around, Hodges told media. The following year, after reworking the missile, Ukraine appeared to begin using it for strikes in Crimea that eliminated a couple of Russia's precious S-400 air defense systems. The Moskva isn't the only vessel in the Russian Black Sea Fleet that has taken a beating from Ukrainian weapons. Though Ukraine doesn't have a proper navy, they have still been able to take out nearly a third of Russia's warships. Ukrainian forces have used unmanned maritime drones, aptly nicknamed Sea Babies, to badly damage Russian vessels. And on August 4, 2023, Video footage captured one such sea drone zooming toward the Russian landing ship, the Olenogorsky Gorniak, before the feed cuts out after detonation, and three months later, two more Russian vessels were damaged by Ukrainian sea drones. Earlier this year, a Ukrainian special military unit sank a small Russian warship called the Ivanovets using six satellite-controlled naval drones on jet skis. Though weapons production has soared in the past year, Ukraine lacks Russia's wartime industrial capacity and supply of heavy weaponry, it has relied on weapons provided by partners, but it has also made use of weapons captured from the enemy. Ukraine has gotten its hands on a lot of Russian equipment, including Russian main battle tanks, but it often has to go through repairs before it can be used in battle, and the Ukrainians don't always have access to the parts. Meanwhile, in a bid to strengthen their critical air defense capabilities, Ukrainian soldiers also combined Western surface-to-air missiles and Soviet-era launchers in an effort American officials call the Franken-SAM program. The name is a reference to Frankenstein and the abbreviation for surface-to-air missile, and the improvised air defense system was born from a need to bolster Ukraine's capabilities to protect the energy grid and civilian from Russian airstrikes during the winter.